So, today, here we go. Next video. Yes. Um, I'm going to make a uh, fake Glock, a rubber Glock, uh, so you can hit people over the head with it. This thing. And I'm going to do that with the 3D printed mold instead of making silicone molds. Let me show you how I did it. Normally when you want to make multiple copies of a part, you make a silicone mold and then you cast parts in that mold. But silicone molding material is not easy to get at the moment here in Cyprus, so I've decided to make a 3D print a mold. Uh, I have a good CAD model of a Glock 34. Uh, it's complete with all the internal mechani mechanicals and support. So if you slice it in half, there's voids and openings and all that kind of stuff. So I need to fill it. So using my iron CAD, I'm filling up all the little holes and making sure that it's completely filled up and none of the filling sticks out through the shell of the Glock. Then I'm placing that on top of a block and doing a Boolean subtract. So from that block, I'm going to detract the filling and the Glock. Then I have a negative lock in that block. I'm copying that block to the other side. I detract the other half of the Glock from there. Make some positioning blocks so that the two valves always fit nicely together. Exactly centered on the Glock. And then after the workshop, we go to fill it up. See you there. For polyurethane foam to release from the mold, we need to use some release agent because I never forget. Oh, wait, shake this stuff first. Polyurethane is a glue. And if we want to use this mold again, or actually want to get a part out, pays to prep. Love these little um, cardboard coffee cups. This is a wax, waxy material dissolved, and once you brush it on, the liquid will evaporate and the wax will stay behind nicely nice and thin but of course you have to make sure that you get into all the little nooks and crannies or it will be stuck don't ask me how I know that I think that happens to everybody I remember when I was building my car I had finally gotten a nice mold for the rear bodywork, which was a bit of a complex shape because it had two big aerodynamic humps on the back, behind my head, so to speak. And of course, that mold stuck, or the, the product, the shell that I was actually making, stuck to the mold. Had to redo half the mold. I managed to save some of it though. Long time ago. Mold is prepped. We're now measuring out the amount of polyurethane needed. 60 grams of the yellow bottle and twice that of the blue bottle. Halfway through my first bottle ran out so I had to grab a second batch. I realized that I should have measured the white stuff directly into the mixing cup instead of doing two, but this way I know for sure that I'm doing one and two instead of having to think about different weights and so forth. You know, my math in my head is just terrible. Anyway, adding black because I haven't mixed the, the other parts in yet, I can take my time here and mix this uh, coloring in 
with all the time in the world so I'm making sure that the black is completely uh, mixed in the moment we pour the second component in here we go that's I now have about 30 seconds pop life so I have to hurry up the first test we did with the white gun you see underneath the trigger guard was not completely so first I'm filling in the tr trigger guard a little bit now I really have to hurry up clamping it quickly and pouring in the rest of the polyurethane mol mol uh, material and then we just clamp up some more and put it down and wait for two hours until it's cooked and I will see you then okay it has been more than an hour and I can't wait any longer this stuff hardens in 20 minutes and then it reaches full potential so to speak in two hours but hey as I said I can't wait any longer because this is always oh this is the mixing the inside of the mixing cup by the way <laughs> and it's solid so it should be okay but this is always the moment of truth isn't it solid again doesn't matter how much wax wax you use it still sticks because it's polyurethane you dummy okay what do you think first sight well at least the trigger guard is is one in one piece It's a bit too much flashing on it. Trim that off properly, of course. This looks a little bit too much, and this doesn't look smooth enough. But nah, looks a bit fake, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, lessons learned. Overall the molds worked well. You can see the infill coming through, so that means that the top layers need to be thicker and maybe also use um, better material than PLA because higher temperature resistance. And also that aluminium powder looks a bit too much fake for, for a Glock who's all matte black. So. All in all, not bad. Okay, and the Glock is nice. The lessons learned here is I need to use more black, clearly, because the thing is grey instead of nice and black. Also, that aluminium powder that I used to color the metal bits doesn't work. It looks too much fake. The barrel needs to be a little bit deeper because this is too visible. But again, this is going to be used in the background, so details are good. That pillowing is an issue. Overall, happy with it. Well, that was a rubber clock. If you like what I'm doing, consider subscribing. If you don't like what I'm doing, uh, please leave a message in the comments. Thank you very much. Bye.